If you live in a bigger city, especially in the United States, chances are a local internet service provider, or ISP, has tried to sell you blazing fast gigabit internet. Yes, a thousand megabits per second or one gigabit per second is really fast and it sounds really cool, but is it worth the high price? Let's take a look. For most people, your internet comes from a local cable provider like Spectrum or Comcast. And because there's not enough bandwidth or space in the physical cable for a TV, phone, and internet to pass through, the download speeds, like when you're opening this post or watching Netflix, has to be capped at around 500 megabits per second. And since most customers are downloading more than uploading, like posting a picture on Facebook, Upload speeds are typically capped at around 20 megabits per second or less. If you're a DSL or satellite customer, your connection will suffer from the same issues. Before getting into gigabit internet, let's talk about the core technology which has allowed this fast speed to come to your front door. Currently, the only way to get gigabit internet to your house is by using a fiber optic network. At the time of writing this, Fiber optic networks are being rolled out to larger cities by big telecom companies. Fiber is a glass wire insulated by plastic that uses light to move data back and forth. Fiber is great because it has more bandwidth or has more space to send more data back and forth than a copper cable. Fiber cables are used as a backbone of the World Wide Web, an example being the fiber optic cables that wrap around the oceans connecting whole continents and islands to the internet. Through fiber, telecom companies can offer higher speeds such as gigabit without the rest of the network suffering. However, there is a drawback. Fiber is incredibly expensive. Rolling out fiber entails running a 100% fiber connection from the internet service provider's hub all the way to your house. That's a lot of fiber, which isn't cheap. And because it's not affordable for the internet company, they most likely are not gonna make it affordable for you, at least at first. So this chart shows how long it will take to download a 30 gigabyte movie and a one gigabyte file. With a gigabit internet connection, you can download a movie that's three gigabytes in size in about 24 seconds, which is about three and a half minutes faster than with a 100 megabit connection. A one gig file can be downloaded in about eight seconds, which would take a little more than a minute with a 100 meg connection. Then you should be able to upload these same files and get roughly the same times. That's a huge time saver. But note that the download times listed in this chart are theoretical. It does not take into account real world variables. Essentially, you will never actually reach those times. Which now gets us to the original question. Is gigabit fiber worth it? The short answer is no. Let me explain. If you have the option for gigabit internet in your neighborhood, your internet provider may have played it up a bit with the advertising. So let's talk about my two main issues with fiber. As of now, when you subscribe to gigabit internet, chances are you will never actually get that speed. The key is to read the fine print. One thing you'll find is that although your internet provider may be sending between 1000 megabits and 990 megabits to your house, you'll find that due to overhead, the fastest speeds you can get on your device are around 940 megabits per second, which is still super fast until you realize the most you'll actually be able to get out of it is about half. Why? I'm working off the assumption that you only have mobile devices connected to your internet wirelessly via Wi-Fi. And if that's the case, the fastest speeds you can get are at most 600 megabits per second. And this is not because of your internet provider nor your mobile device. It's just that current Wi-Fi standards are just not strong enough to carry that speed. And if you want the full speeds you're paying for, you'll have to plug your device directly into the internet, which for most mobile phones like an iPhone, it's not an option. And you would think that running a speed test with speedtest.net would tell you your actual speeds your device is receiving. Unfortunately, this isn't always the case. When you run a test, it will pick a server that it thinks will work best. However, that's not always the case. 
your speed test can be affected by too many people testing their speeds on that server or that server just might not be able to test to such high speeds. So to sum this up, you may never reach the speeds you're paying for, especially with your mobile devices. It may sound awesome that you can theoretically download a movie in a couple of seconds or never have a Netflix video buffer again, but ask yourself, how often am I actually downloading big files? And if you don't, what else can you use all that fast speed for? Definitely not for streaming. According to the FCC, streaming an HD 1080p video only requires between 5 megabits per second to 8 megabits per second, with 25 megabits per second being recommended for streaming 4K video. Video chat apps need between 1 megabit per second and 6 megabits per second, and even online gaming is recommended to be between 4 megabits per second and 8 megabits per second. So if not for streaming, how about just loading websites? No again. When we look at the internet today, our whole world, there are so few who have gigabit internet. Optimizing the World Wide Web for gigabit internet users would make the internet unattainable for most people on this planet. Even in the United States, the FCC says that you only need 25 megabits per second to be classified as broadband internet. And any big site that you try to access will load incredibly fast, whether on 1,000 megabits per second or 100 megabits per second. At the end of the day, your Google searches will still load in a blink of an eye. So then who's gigabit internet even for? No telecom company rolls out fiber for no reason at all. For one thing, it's getting ready for what the future will hold. Maybe sometime in the future, there'll be an application that requires a super fast internet connection. Another reason, fiber is just a higher quality cable. With this extra bandwidth, telecom companies can issue more services to customers without being held back by a bunch of small copper cable. With upload speeds matching the download speeds, fiber is a great option for our creators and developers who find themselves uploading large files often. Gigabit and fiber are also great for gaming due to its super low latency. Lastly, this can be appealing if you have multiple devices connected to your home internet network. With faster internet speeds, there's more bandwidth to share between all of your devices. So to conclude, gigabit internet may sound like something special. Its fast speeds may make it easy to advertise to customers. If you can afford the high price, go for it. Try it out and see if you can tell the difference. Although you may never obtain gigabit speeds, it may give you a better range than your previous plan. But also look out for specials. Many companies are trying to sell their fiber services to more customers by offering great bundle deals and including extra perks like throwing in a free streaming service. However, if you don't have fiber in your area, you're not missing out on much. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you're leaving with more questions than answers, leave those in the comments below. You can listen to this video on our podcast, Apple Guide Podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts, and follow at Apple Guide Web on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Once again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.